Jonathan Mannion is his name. You may have heard it if you know what you're doing in hip hop. And you may not have heard it because you may not just be in the industry like that. But uh, Jonathan Mannion, tell us who you are. So I guess in general, I am Jonathan Mannion, photographer, director, visionary, creative expert within this game for the last 20 years. Um, and, and, he's, and he's a great guy. And he's our friend. And, and I'm a, a great guy and I'm a friend of Hot 97. Yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> since way back. Um, but you started... In what year? Just like, let's get, try to get the timeline together of like, because yeah. the importance of who you are and even people like yourself behind the scenes who are the people who capture the images and create the look of what hip hop has been and how great and artistic it has been. A lot of it comes from you. No, nah, man, I appreciate that, man. It's a big statement. And, you know, I kind of put that weight on my shoulders. I know I'm one of the sort of leading voices, visual voices within this game. So, you know that makes me put 100% effort into everything I do, you know? And it really, I guess, stems, man, speaking about a timeline, you know, from 1988, 89, Big Daddy Kane, Cool Mo D, NWA, that's like when I fell in love with it. Slick Rick, On and On, mm -hmm. Tribe, mm -hmm. De La. Um, I did a radio, college radio way back when, WKCO 91.9, Kenyon College. College radio. Little drop was hard, though, yeah. man. Like, we were getting all the fresh records, so that built a knowledge. Mm -hmm. I moved to New York in 93 to accept a position with uh, Richard Avedon, arguably the greatest to ever touch a camera. Look that uh, that guy up, man. He's since passed away, man. Uh, rest, you know, in peace. Richard but Avedon. Richard Avedon, A-V-E-D-O-N. He's the okay. baddest dude to ever touch a camera. Michael Jordan of photography. That's wow. who I learned from one year. And then a kid named Ben Watts. Um, Stephen Klein, who, you know, did Madonna for the cover of W Magazine. Wow. wow. Brad Pitt. Like, mm -hmm. these, were the, these were my mentors. These are the people that I assisted, that I contributed visually to. And then uh, 1996 really kind of kicked it off. There were sprinkles before, like Biggie at the Palladium on stage, mm. like, you know. But uh, 1996, Reasonable Doubt was kind of the kickoff. <laughs> and uh, eight Jay-Z album covers later. You, you have a I'm great story. Here. You have a great story about, about that. Can you please share it with us? Yeah, no, of course, man. So, yeah, 1996, you know, album's coming out. Uh, there was a, a, a girl named KB Payne, man, who I, I did some, some work with. Uh, with the Fugees. She was like a press rep and she took a position over uh, down on John Street when Rockefeller was down there. And she said, get in here today, man. They're trying to decide who to do this album cover and I know it's meant to be you, you know? So I came came over there and, uh, you know, they're like, you know, Biggs is, Biggs is the money man, kind of like playing black back in the scene. You know, Dame is gonna be in your face about cash, how much it's gonna cost. <laughs> and Jay is a super creative man. So hit those targets, man, and, and it's yours. I just feel it. So I went in and I pitched an incredible idea to Jay. Uh, originally, he was calling that that cover um, "Heir to the Throne," and I think he felt because he is so clever and he really does think through the problems constantly, always has, always does, which is why he's sitting in the throne that he is right now. But uh, you know, he felt that that was presumptuous, so he changed it to "Reasonable Doubt" to let you, the audience, decide whether he is the king mm -hmm. or not. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was kind of incredible. So I had a whole set of ideas for Heir to the Throne, and then it swapped and switched to Reasonable Doubt. And I said, you know, here's what we're going to do. We're going to rock this, you know, Gotti, you know, John Gotti, Little Italy mm -hmm. surveillance, kind yeah. of like gritty. He's like, yeah, I'm with that. That's dope. You know, because I think it was a nice comparison and separated him from the drug running Miami speedboat. Right, right, right. You know, right. linen kind of, right. you know, cigarette boats down there right. in Miami. Like, yeah, that wasn't really him, so we established those roots, that Brooklyn roots, and it was a great foundation upon and which to build. And it fit the music as well. The music yeah. fit yeah. that. You know, and then, you know, invited back to the, da to the dance, uh, you know, In My Lifetime, Volume 1, mm. Volume 2, Dynasty, Blueprint, you know, Black Album, Couple Joints, <laughs> be Best of Both Worlds. <laughs> It's, hard, it's always hard for John. Yeah. Anytime I try to talk to him, it's, it's just hard a fact. for him. I know, but it's hard for you to pat yourself on the back. I realize that. It is. But I'm a got, hum, I'm As a part dude. of this interview, you're going to have to do a little, a little bit stunting. of breaking your arm, a little bit patting it's yourself okay. on the back. It's right. cool. It's clean. You can do it. I, stre <laughs> I, stre I stretched it out, man. Yeah. So uh, run through some other t names and albums that we would know. Uh, the visuals, the, the artistic sure. packaging and videos around. You know, I, I think from, from doing Reasonable Doubt, and, you know, certainly there was many images before then, you know, sort of early D'Angelo stuff, you know, big on stage. Like, you can check out all the work online. We'll give you that information later. But um, Eminem was a huge one. Marshall Mathers LP, both versions, the one that we shot in Amsterdam, mm -hmm. the one that we shot in Detroit. DMX. Um, 
DMX, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. DMX, dark and hell is hot. Yeah, DMX, yeah, yeah. grand champ. Crazy. DMX, something else, greatest hits. The one with the two dogs that I yeah. shot for the source. Yeah. Like, you know, I think I, I never really looked at uh, doing the album covers specifically. That was always the pinnacle of what I wanted because that attaches to the music forever. You know, you look back at a Coltrane album, you know, or Miles Davis, there's an image associated with that that's gonna last forever. I'm sure Miles Davis did a bunch of magazine covers back in the day. They fall kind of to the wayside. You have to really seek those pictures out. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be synonymous with the music and make the visuals fit. And, you know, that that was always the aim, the, like, the definitive photo of that person now you're in that a, moment. you're a hip hop lover. You, Big time. you fell in love with the music. Um, but when you went out and decided, you know what, I'm going to be uh, a creative artistic photographer as well as, uh, you know, curator of dope videos and all that other shit. When you decided to do that, did you know that hip hop was headed in that direction of being mainstream culture? No, I, I think we built it to be that. I think I think one of the most beautiful things, and I've been speaking about this a lot, um, is that early on, I think everybody was playing the same game. You know what I mean? It, it, like it certainly there was competition to be the best, but like we all believed in the same movement. Like we were all moving to the same direction, and all realized that we needed each other to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, now I find it's a, a little different. You know what I mean? It's like there can be a lot of self-serving lanes that I've experienced over the last like handful of years mm -hmm. because like, man, I don't need that. We're just going to do it ourselves, man. We're just going to do it. And that's cool. And you might get to the end, but I, I, I don't know. I find it was such a rich. So what you're saying movement. is, is the, the ecosystem of hip hop in the 90s um, and even the early 2000s. It was like we knew how to employ people who were specialists in a craft that sure. helped move the economy of hip hop and the culture of hip hop forward. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I think, you know, a new generation and, and God bless them because they all want to be part of it as well. But I know a lot of young photographers that are just like, I just picked up a camera and started shooting. Like that's undeniable for certain people, but it still is about craft and a skill set. And that's what elevates a genre, you know? And that's what I felt my, you know, I have no 16s. I have maybe like a one-liner, <laughs> like, which I won't even bother dropping because mm -hmm. it's corny. Like my contribution is visual to this game because that's where I have, what I have mastered. I'm an expert at creating these visuals and getting performances out of people that feel authentic. But is some of this our fault as people who have been in hip hop a long time and not making sure? And look, I you know people get at me often, you know, young people especially, which is how the whole old man thing came about because I believe in learning a craft. Sure. I believe in specializing Necessary. in something. I believe in making sure you pay your dues. That's the school that I come from. Is like, look, you don't just get to get on the mic. You know, just because right. you got bars, that don't mean you get to get on the mic. Matter right. of fact, you couldn't even get on the mic at a party unless the DJ knew who you was and you was down with a crew that he fucked with. Yeah. And matter of fact, the MC wasn't even the most important piece of the culture. It was the DJ. Sure. The MC didn't come until way after graffiti, breakdancing, and all that other shit. Then the MC came along. But I believe in those things, and that's what's made the culture thrive. Today, I don't know if people still believe in those same uh, rules yeah. of no, the culture. The, the tenets of culture have definitely changed, man. I mean, I think... Even looking back at, at the work that I did, you know, like it was earned. You know, I remember my first magazine cover and how I fought for that. And then my first like single cover and then my first cover and then my first album and then it being out on the street, my first billboard in Times Square. And what my, was your first like, magazine cover? Uh, it was uh, for Touch Magazine. I shot D'Angelo. It was a magazine out of London. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. I was a big Brown Sugar, you know, sort of D'Angelo album fan. And I was like, An album? really? I get it. I get a time with D'Angelo. Yeah. I shot yeah. him in my house. I really? shot Reasonable Doubt on the roof of my building, man, where I live. Like this total bachelor pad, you know, it was like. That was in Brooklyn? Yeah, it was crazy. No, this was in uh, Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. Reasonable Doubt was shot on 72nd and Riverside. And what was your, you said Times Square billboard. What was your, what was that? Godson. Nas was the first one to put me up there. Wow. You know, I mean, there was billboards around town and, you know, Brooklyn and this. But it wasn't Times Square. Times Square is some other, you know. Yeah. That's something else. His name is Jonathan Mannion. Uh, you have a website that you've just relaunched. Yeah. Right? And it's like videos and all your photography. Yeah, it's everything. It's, you know, from Jay Holiday Bed to Trinidad James Females Welcome, mm -hmm. shot down in Trinidad to uh, Game One Blood, you know, and like that's in the video section. There's an archive section where you find Biggie, Outcast, Jay, uh, M, Corrupt, you know, everything, and then everything. there's new Kendrick, ASAP, Rocky, you know, all the favorites, you know, 
But the do kids you, are loving. Do you think that the, <laughs> the uh, financial situation of the of the entertainment industry and specifically the music industry? Do you think that that's contributed to some of the demise in, as you call it, the tenets of culture? Mm -hmm. Because when you when you talk about a reasonable doubt album, or you talk about some of the stuff that you did with Eminem and things like that, that was when the artistic integrity of not only the music but the actual visual aspects of hip hop was very important. It doesn't seem like uh, people who are putting out music today put that same uh, value on it and, and we'll spend the money to get it done right. Do you feel like that's part of the problem? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know whether it's a problem. You know what I mean? Like, is it really good or bad? I think it just challenges you as a creator mm. to work within certain parameters. And it's difficult for some that have established a certain way of working where they expect a result from you and you say, this is what that is. Like, if you want to drive a Bentley, you have to buy a Bentley. If you want to drive a Honda Accord, that's fine. It'll get you from A to B. You go get your milk from the store and come right. back. But like, there's degrees of this, you know, to lump like all there's photographers to this ish. Yeah, man, big time. You know, like to lump us all into one crew as like y'all just photographers. Oh, and that's sort of good enough. All right. Well, that's a fault I think of of curators, of art directors. You know what I mean? People are just sort of like claiming positions just because you write it down on a business card doesn't make you that. Right. You know, I could put that I'm an astronaut. Man, the farthest I've been off the ground is, you know, thirty thousand feet in about, a plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. Now you, you know have a new I mean? collaboration with Aku. Oh man, yeah, it's incredible, man. You know, Tip has been the homie for a long time. Worked with them. Uh, well, Urban Legend, a bunch of XXL covers, man. I mean, I've been fortunate to have a great run. Incredible images established, and uh, you know, got together. Basically, he was trying to figure out a, you know, a collaboration. It was actually Ralph Reynolds. Um, who gave me a call and who during is that? Sandy. Who is that? Uh, he's he, one of the owners of Vaku. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. Called me up and it was a crazy story, man. I, I realized that I could plug in a phone without having to use power. And during Sandy, you know, I was like, all right, I got to buy this phone. I'm going to plug it in. And it rang about two minutes later. And he's like, hey, man, you know, it's, it's Ralph. I was thinking about doing something. Maybe, you know, get something accomplished. Like, it was just like sort of this weird divine intervention. I was like, I'm down. Why don't you come through? rip through the archive, see what you love, see how we can collaborate, let's start to have discussions. And from those discussions, it became, man, we want to do like 50 pieces with you, you know? And a lot of them were celebrity and a lot of them represented a beautiful, like sort of slice of lifestyle. Wait, when you, you know? say pieces, you mean photography pieces, not clothing pieces? Or yeah, or both. clothing pieces. So this oh, is sort okay. of like wearable art, basically. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, his, um, his, his photography is featured in a lot of the t-shirts. You have oh! hats. What else do you have? But it's a, uh, it's... I'm sorry, what else do I have? You have t-shirts, you have hats. Yeah, t-shirts, hats, shorts. I mean, there's there's a ton of stuff that they did, you know? I mean, like, look, a lot of people are doing collaborations. It's sort of the way of the world right now. You know, it's like somebody times a brand mm -hmm. equals whatever, a square equals box dope. on the front of a shirt, you know? Sometimes and sometimes not. I find this some bucket, of it really... This bucket right here, this is a cool bucket, it's tough. Yeah, it is, man. I mean, there's so many pieces that are incredible. And, you know, I think what's what's beautiful what is a, it's a fully realized collection. You know what I mean? It's what? not sort of like we did two shirts and that was cute. Right. And we put it out and it sold out and whatever. Have a nice day. Is You're talking highbrow art talk right now. I was like, what do you mean fully realized? What are you saying to me? Man, I'm an artist, man. What are you I could talk to right highbrow. I'm highbrow, well, man. Ebro, I'm highbrow. Is this you're available losing. online oh, right tough. now? Huh? Is this available online right this now? This is available right now. Yeah, and it's things that you pass by every day. You know what I mean? Ebro's holding up this ill shirt with this uh, like Show jewelry shirt, hanging Ebro. down from the front of... Uh, I mean, it's hard. It's hard. You need that one in your life, man. Like These are the things that, as a photographer, I'm bringing to the world. Like These are things that people pass by every day. It's and what you know separates what? me from I didn't, the back. From I, didn't, the back. Um, I didn't expect, and you know, my apologies for not expecting it, but I didn't expect the quality of a coup to be as great as it is. I'm surprised. And it's custom fit, like it's well made. How much does this shit retail for, my G? Shit expensive? <laughs> <laughs> for you? For you, we got you all day, man. You're good. Everybody else go to the website and check it out, man. Well, I don't know the price point. It's aclothing.com? It's aclothingbrand.com. Yep. This back scratches me. The back is scratches. Hairy back. Oh, I mean, that's for you. <laughs> well, we're gonna, we're gonna you know, say Spanish this. girls got we're hairy back. I definitely don't have a hairy back. We'll say this for Rosenberg. He's our furry friend. Wow. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> maybe I'll sign it for him, man. Just write his name. A special gift. So in this uh, catalog, I'm looking at the spring summer 2014. Um, this is all photography by you as well, or no? Uh, no, not my photography. It's just uh, 
yeah, this was already uh, completed. There's so many Got like it. lanes, lanes that they've created. Layers. All right, cool. You know what I mean? But uh, and then, but I my did, work is a, but I did get a a Manion a cool like book though that came in like some cool ass box. Oh, I don't, that's, oh right. that's the that's Book right. of Kings. That's right. There, there yeah. you go. That was book of Kings. Kings. What is that? So yeah, basically, a, a coup curated all of the people they felt had the loudest voice, and and I'm sure that there are volumes of this that are going to happen. But you know, obviously, a king of oneself is what a coup stands for. So ah. the Book of Kings was a curated version and look at the people that are the tastemakers and the people defining culture today that had the loudest voices. You know, um, so you know, and I find those kind of things are absolutely needed. It's a celebration of the people that create the highest level visuals. You know, so. It won a, it won an award. I can't even tell you what it is, but uh, Somebody it's an knows. award-winning crazy book that. Uh, yeah. You know the name, boss man. What, what's man, doing? step in here, Sabe. Introduce yourself to the people. Man, talk to the people. Yo, man. my name is Sabe Burnett. I'm the uh, yeah, vice president of marketing. Come on, go on down there. Uh, my name is Sabe Burnett. I'm the vice president of marketing. At, uh, Fly light skin nigga. Cool. That's what he is. I be seeing him out here in these streets. <laughs> Fabulous, fabulous. <laughs> so yeah, so we so as man you mentioned, we did the Book of Kings, and and it was just as he said, it was it was our way of really celebrating the lifestyle and the culture that we're a part of and and really calling out these individuals who we felt uh, possessed kingly traits, you mm -hmm. know, and, and male and females, but just individuals who were collectively leaders within their space. And, you know, we had everyone from uh, Iggy Azalea to Pharrell to D-Nice, T.I., nice, obviously Mannion, Melody Asani. Mm. Uh, the the list Su goes on. Su it's suicide, forty yeah. ounce. Um, and what up, Van? And, and people in, from all different genres uh, that we just felt the need to celebrate. And we are in the process of uh, putting together volume two that we're extremely excited about. That I will be shooting. That that man will be shooting. <laughs> and, and, Claim you know, that check. Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> Claim that he check. Just... He put the stamp down just very minute. <laughs> you heard it here first. That's it. You're the pressure. Are you wearing one of his pieces right yes, now? Yes, absolutely. This is one of his pieces now. Tight. Yeah, we, I mean, listen, we, we are extremely excited about this uh, collaboration. It's a limited edition program, and it, it really gave us an opportunity to work with Mannion. And the funny story is that there was actually this picture that was sitting in the design house uh, in Virginia where our, our, uh, our corporate offices are based, and that's where all the designs come from. And they had this black and white photo of these two kids sitting up on the board, uh, the inspiration board, and they had been sitting there, sitting there, and then Ralph Reynolds was looking like, yo, who shot this? Like, we need to find out who, like, where does the image come from? Uh, where did it come from? And so, come to find out, Mannion shot. So, did, the due, did, do, uh, did all the due diligence, called Mannion up, said, dude, we got to meet. And, and, and oh, that's what's, how what's the crazy, process man, and, and he may not remember this, but I walked in with a pitch, like, when the brand was, like, started. So, I remember uh, T.I. wearing an Aku shirt on the cover of the XXL. I know Vanessa Satin was just in here. You know, she was part of all that movement. It was Tip versus T.I. and he wore a black a black Aku shirt on one. And I was like, what is that? He's like, oh, that's my new joint. And they're like, all right, cool. I was like, who do I talk to, man? I want to make a contribution because, you know, obviously anything that Tip aligns with is going to move, you know? So, yeah, I, I went in and I pitched this thing and we were going to go to London and go to my family's house out there and shoot some stuff around. He was like, all right. And then it just kind of fizzled and went away. I was like, all right, cool. Well, I'll be patient. You'll well, need me in a minute. Just so y'all know, I'm the stick up king. So now that we've run this complete a cool commercial, <laughs> I will be cracking into that marketing budget. Can we get him right everything? Get listen, him listen, everything. Some of them right around the corner. We now need listen, to have a conversation. Listen, 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 listen. I've been doing this too long. Clothes don't cut it for me, man. We got to talk about them dollars. Well, listen, listen. We we are here for many reasons. Obviously, yeah, we got to talk. That's my agent over there <laughs> right, now. Clearly, clearly. Yeah, I, I like, I, I like, we deal, I like right? that hey, shitty talking. I love, right? I love ISIS. She's great. You, my nigga. <laughs> All that is my God. That's right. why y'all here. But, but now, now let's get down to practice. I got to see what that line look like. Yeah, we got to see what that line look like. <laughs> right. So, and, and what you all can't see is Maine has clearly chosen his side and oh, moved absolutely. on to the other side. Right. Yeah. Hot 97. I'm Jonathan Mannion, the host of the Breakfast Morning Show, man, with Ebro, Laura Styles, Rosenberg, man. Yeah, Cypher right. Sounds. Drop that bungee golem tune for me right now. Yeah, we're ready. We're ready. We yeah, we're ready. Team. Go ahead, absolutely. give him the mic back. Absolutely, man. You know, you guys are a staple here in the city. Mm. You know, with, without question. And and we are here because we understand that. And and for us, as we look to continue to grow the brand, I mean, we need 
to to align ourselves with those partners. So without question, man, we're looking to figure out how we can continue to move forward yeah, and progress yeah, no, with you guys. Right. I just had to stick you up real quick. Yeah, yeah so. you know, I would, you know Rob, yeah. Robbie with no guns, you know as they do. You know how I do it. My man, it's been doing this a long time. <laughs> so listen, Jonathan, man, you also have some re heavy uh, reggae roots and passions and, and photography you've done. So before I let you get out of here, I want yeah, you to, fact. you've done some more recent things for Bungie, uh, yeah. but even some historic things. Yeah, uh, you know, Beanie Man, I think there's three album covers that I did uh, mm -hmm. that start back with uh, Art and Life back, I think, in 99. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I've been a fan of the culture since way, way back, man, since Shaba, Supercat, yeah. like, you know, Buju, and I had an opportunity to work with Buju as well, man, did uh, Rasta Got Soul and Too Bad, you know, but it's it's a passion point. You know, people say, like, what's your personal work? Like, my personal work is certainly hip-hop and the music stuff that I've done. But my personal work that really hits my heart that I kind of would do unconsciously is anything having to do with Caribbean culture. It's just a, a feel and a sensibility and a pride and, you know, well, I mean, uh, look, it just gets you know, me moving, man. Uh, cool Herc from Jamaica, um, the sound boy, the sound systems, the DJ, uh, the, the the parties, all of the way we party, partying in the park and all that stuff was started in Jamaica. You oh, know, yeah. and it started in the streets of Jamaica, and that's also a part of hip hop culture as well. So, and you know, there's a lot of West Indian and, and roots in just in Black America, but specifically in New York where hip hop started. So it all ties together. The feeling sure. that you have for hip hop is is the same feeling you have for dance hall reggae. It's, it's it was hip hop of reggae music at the time. So yeah, no doubt, man. I mean, I would say it's even like even today. That's that's my comfort zone. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not gonna run off and listen to Mob Deep. I love them, I respect the entire game, I love the contributions that I made, you know, but uh, you know, if I'm gonna tuck off and just sit and have an Appleton and Coke, man, yeah. you best believe Barris Hammond is playing sweetly in the background, yeah. man. You Jonathan know? Mannion's his name, and JonathanMannion.com. Yeah, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-M-A-N-N-I-O-N. As well as shout to the Aku family, and that's Aku, A-K-O-O.com. It's a cool clothing.com. A cool, a cool clothing. clothing brand.com. Brand.com. Yeah. All right, there you have it. Thanks for coming by, my brother. Man, thank you for having me.